Hey B-holes. We are here to do some weekend reads. So um I'm recording this on QuickTime now. Hopefully this will be better. Um we will see though. But <clears throat> since last month was all about um nonfiction November and boldly November and all that stuff, um I got behind on everything else I was reading. So what I'm doing now is um, I don't want to start anything new until I finish reading all the stuff that I started reading and then would like walk away from. And usually that's because like I get a new book or something um, and I want to finish it because it is like 8 million pages long and it is a bit dry at the minute. But I hear the second volume picks up, so we'll see about that. But anyway, so let's get into it. Um, first off, um, I read a couple books Mark sent me. Uh, we'll start with this one, The Captain America Battles Barren Blood. This was awesome, um, and I don't... I never was really into Captain America, um, but this has made me want to check some more of it out. Um, another thing that was kind of cool was that there is a, this was from like a couple, like three issues, I think. Um, the two about Baron Blood and then, um, one where Captain America is going to run for president. And I had a little tiny comic of that, um, that I got in the, can't remember the name of the toy line, but I had a little Captain America action figure, and he had a shield with a hologram thing in it. Like, all of them came with shields. It was kind of weird. But anyway, it, the comic came with the figure. And so, like, I had that comic, so that was really neat to see it in there. Um, the next one Mark sent is The Untold Legend of Batman. This is flipping crazy, and if you are familiar with Batman's origin story and all of his buddies' origin stories, this is like a slap in the face, almost. But what makes this really cool is how it's told, um, because you have... Um, like, it's one story, but in that story, you have Batman's origin, Robin's origin, Alfred's origin, Batgirl's origin, um, Two-Face's origin, Joker's origin. Um, yeah, I know, right? There's just, like, a bunch of um, stuff in here, and a lot of it is different than especially modern continuity. So um, definitely, if you ever get a hold of this just for like shits and giggles, give this a read because it it's mind-boggling. Like the whole time I was like, what the fuck is going on? Um, but some of the stuff in it, like with Alfred, um, is stuff... That if you remember All Star Batman from a couple years ago, they oh. had a Alfred storyline that's very similar to this one. Um, Jim Gordon knows about Batgirl and all that other stuff, so that was kind of new compared to compared to right now. Um, yeah. Just all sorts of stuff. Giz, hush! I know you're freezing. Um, I finished the first um, El Sprague de Camp Conan book. Um, and this one is kind of... It's hard for me not to be pissed off um, at good old El Sprague. But um, the thing in the crypt is a story that you you might not know 
like the story itself, but they take a bit from it and put it in the movie um, where he finds his sword in the cave. Um, that story was really cool. Hall of the Dead was pretty cool. Now, this is as far as the non-Howard, like, completely Howard stories. Um, then, The Hand of Negril, Nergal, The Hand of Nergal, and The City of Skulls. Those I didn't like as much. <clears throat> the other thing is, is that I do not like... Um, El Sprague de Camp's chronology of events. Um, he has um, Tower of the Elephant and Hall of the Dead, God in the Bowl, and Rogues in the House here. And he doesn't have Frost Giant's daughter in here. And Thing in the Crypt is probably before... Gosh, I don't know. Because everyone pretty much agrees that Frost Giant's Daughter is the first Conan story because of where it takes place. And if you judge the Hyborian Age um, by the map, if you go by this, he's kind of going all over the place. And he probably didn't do that if we're talking of Conan as a real person. Um, it was probably more of like a... like a nomadic migration kind of thing um, than him running back and forth a bunch. So I think once I finish all of these, um, I'll do a video about the chronology of the stories and what I think and what other people think and stuff like that. Um, so let me know if that sounds interesting. Um, and I'll probably do that. Okay. So this was pretty good. Um, what was it? The Hall of the Dead? Was that a uh, Howard and DeCamp? Okay. That one was pretty cool. There was this um, awesome giant slug in it. Um, oh, you know what else? El Sprague de Camp, that motherfucker, um, he, like, makes Conan, like, creepier than Howard ever did. Um, at the end of, what is it, City of Skulls? Is that what it's called? Why do I keep forgetting the name of that story? City of Skulls. Um, like, they have to rescue this princess or whatever, and take her back to this guy that she's going to marry or whatever. And he takes her back. And him and his buddy are leaving. And he's like, the buddy's like, I can't believe you didn't, like, keep her for yourself. You guys really seem to get on and stuff. And he's like, yeah, I ain't got time for that shit. But um, uh, little does the king know that... His heir is already on his way. Um, she told me before I dropped her off. So, like, he basically gets this girl pregnant, gives her to this guy to marry, and then leaves. Knowing that she's pregnant with his kid. And he just, like, doesn't give a shit. Um, that's kind of shocking. Huh? Huh? Yeah? Okay. So anyway, moving right along. Um, I got this in the mail a couple days ago. This will be in the next book haul. But um, William S. Burroughs' Blade Runner, a movie. I thought this was going to be a hardback, and I was all bummed out that I couldn't find a paperback of it. But look at this. Um, okay, so to give you the series of events, in case you don't know... Um, there was a book called The Blade Runner that I keep pricing because I keep almost getting it. But um, 11 or 12 bucks for like a paperback whose condition I have no idea what it's going to come to me in is kind of scary. 
so I'm trying to find it for a lower price. Um, and when I do, I'll get it and um, tell you all about it. But so I guess Burroughs was hired by some studio to make a screenplay adaptation of the book The Blade Runner. Now, um, he hands in this treatment and they, they end up not making that movie shocking, shockingly. That's sarcasm. And then when the studio also picks up the rights for Do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep, they like the name Blade Runner better, so they end up calling Do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep Blade Runner. Um, so that is how this whole thing works out, because they owned both properties, and they weren't going to make a Blade Runner movie, um, especially based on this treatment. Now, this treatment is shit, okay? Like, the stuff in here that Burroughs puts in is not good, and it's funny because he'll say, this is from the Blade Runner book, um, and then this is from me, and then it's like throbbing penis comes out and blah 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 it's hysterical but what he does and i want to read the blade runner book to see how much of the world building was done in that book or if it was done by burroughs because the world building in this is flipping amazing like um in the blade runner story not the do androids dream of electric sheep version um a lot of medical stuff and surgeries and all this other stuff is done on the black market. And so Blade Runners are these guys who um, basically run drugs and um, other things for operations like black market operations to um, doctors and to people who need it or whatever. So the, the blade runners are basically like the drug mules, I guess. And every doctor who's like a black market surgeon or whatever has a blade runner to go out and do these things for him. So, but the world, like it goes from like 1900 to like 2020 something. Um, like the history of the progression of how this happened. That is worth this book. Um, so even if you don't like the story that um, Burroughs tells, the world that is built here is so worth the purchase price. Um, this is funny. I found someone wrote in this book it says, let's go back and have me put on my gift. I wonder what that means. I can only think of dirty stuff. Um, but one thing that that book made me do was really miss reading Burroughs of the William S. Nature um, as opposed to Burroughs of the Edgar Rice Nature. So I think I'm going to um, pick up some other more obscure Burroughs books um, and be reading that. Uh, another thing that I started and didn't finish was Look at the Birdie by Kurt Vonnegut. Um, this is all stuff that came out after he died, I guess. So um, I've only read one or two stories out of here, and it was a while back, so I might just start over. But, um, so I'm going to be reading that, and I started, um, this over, because I couldn't remember, my bookmark had fallen out, and I couldn't remember where I was, so I just started this over. Um, you get so alone at times that it just makes sense, by Charles Bukowski. And reading this has made me really miss reading Bukowski as well. So, between, um, Burroughs and Bukowski... I'm really, really missing um, reading them. So um, I have one more book of Bukowski's on my shelf that I haven't read. I'll probably jump into that as soon as I'm done with this. This is great. I'm loving it. Um, 
super good. And then the only other thing that I started that I haven't... Oh, sh damn it. Everything just fell on the floor. Um, is the King Kong novelization. Um, so I got to finish this too. God, this is just gorgeous. I wish I could just like hang this up. Um, <clears throat> and then everything else I have... Oh, man. Is it all scuffed? Dang it. Um, all the other books that I've started reading that I haven't finished are books that I have ebooks of. So, um, and I'm not going to show those to you, but like <clears throat> um, Gulliver of Mars. Um, what else is there? There's a quarry book that I started and never finished. I think it's Quarry in the Middle. Um, I'm going to go back and finish that and hopefully I can get all these done by the end of the year. Cause I don't want to have any lingering books. Um, and then books I was going to start and didn't were, um, masters of the pit by Michael Moorcock and, um, Tarnsman of Gore by John Norman. This is going to be a buddy read. So if anyone's interested, jump on board. Um, <clears throat> and then I would, just because this cover is, like, driving me crazy, I really want to start reading Agent 13, The Midnight Avenger. And I want to get, um, if it's as good as this cover, getting the subsequent books is going to be top priority. So anyway, so that's my weekend reads. Um, let me know, Dan Belay. What you think? And um, we'll, we'll get through December with a smile on our faces. Boy. I gotta find the off button.